Hi, I just wanted to thank my whole family that have helped me through get through this point right now. My mom, my dad, and my wife, Nessa, my sister in New York, and everyone along the way that has helped me through this journey. I miss everyone. Thank you. Um, shout out to my family, especially my parents for coming all the way to Hawaii a bunch of times throughout the last three years to keep me going. Um, my husband for listening to all my venting and always supporting me, um, making me breakfast and buying me flowers. Uh, to my son for mostly sleeping well through the night except for this last month. And uh, to the rest of my family who some of you are watching at home, my grandparents, my aunts and uncles, my sisters, brother-in-law, nieces and nephews, um, couldn't have gotten to this point without all of you and I'm really grateful. And to my friends who also gave me lots of laugh over the years, I, I really appreciate everything. Um, I'd like to give a shout out to, first of all, my wife, uh, who's been my constant companion and uh, it's been a, a pillar of strength throughout this whole experience. Uh, without her uh, and her support, there's definitely no way um, that uh, together we could have accomplished this. i also like to uh, give my love and appreciation to my family and my children who have uh, been a source of uh, inspiration for me. And then also uh, to the, uh, the faculty and staff um, uh, of, of the residency program who have uh, bent over backwards to, to help us out and to, to be great role models and to, to get us on the path we need to be. Thank you so much. Okay, shout out to all my friends and family uh, for supporting me in the three years of residency uh, and tolerating me for that entire time. Thank you. Um, wow, it has been such a journey and I would like to thank my family, my friends, my supporters, my community for everything that you've given me. I cannot believe I'm here today where I am and this is truly a dream come true. So mahalo nui loa and meke ha'a ha'a. I love you. Aloha everyone, it's Neens. Just want to say a special mahalo to all of you for helping us to make our dreams come true. Literally our dreams come true. I think all of us wanted to be doctors when we were kids. So. Uh, we couldn't have gone in here without you. Um, thank you for your love and support through all of the ups and downs. And um, thank you for being here with us on this special day. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight for the 2021 Family Medicine Residency Graduation. We'll be starting first with the Oli. If we can have everybody who will be participating stand up. <laughs> Good job, Jerry. <laughs> Welcome everybody to the class of 2021 um, Family Medicine Residency Program to the University of Hawaii graduation. And we're gonna be serenaded a bit by Charles for a second. Oh, 
evening, everyone. I have often dreamed of a far off place like Hawaii to do my residency. And the crowds will cheer when they see Le Momi Nina, Corey, Chris, Adrea, Caroline, and my face. And a voice keeps saying, This is where I'm meant to be. Now they're on their way. They have gone the distance. I'll be there someday if I can be strong. I know every mile was worth a while. Now we've gone the distance and our journey is complete. <laughs> All right, Charles, thanks for that. So we're gonna have a fun time tonight. Um, it is a celebration. So just uh, by way of introduction, um, welcome, yeah, so welcome to the 2021 Family Medicine graduation. Uh, we are currently the PGY2s and the Rising Chiefs. So my name is Nick Anderson and I'm joined here by Kana Maiji. Um, thank you so much for joining us tonight to celebrate these graduating seven residents. So thank you for everyone uh, joining us both live in person and on Zoom today. Just a reminder for everyone that's joining us in person, if you can please keep your mask on. We're going to be following CDC protocols. Everyone who will be sitting at the front can keep their mask off. So if we can welcome Dr. Chip Hickson. He is our chair and our interim program director for some welcoming remarks. Aloha and welcome. Uh, they didn't tell me I was going to follow a you know, piano uh, recital here, so this is a surprise, surprise to me. Um, but clearly, uh, we're going to have uh, quite a hearty celebration tonight. And uh, um, it's a wonderful, uh, amazing evening outdoors. And uh, what's really, truly amazing to me is this is the first time in a year and a half that I've been in a room with more than uh, eight of these uh, people, and that is really truly remarkable. You know, there's a small viral particle and it's changed so, so many things, and it's uh, impacted our year in, in so many uh, ways. So we're gonna have a, a hearty celebration, but also try to be safe. So uh, thank you all for uh, spacing out a little bit and wearing your masks. Uh, I just wanna say a few words about uh, gratitude, a few words about um, what it means to graduate, and a few words about Juneteenth, this very uh, special brand new holiday that we have, and um, just, uh, just a few words of welcome. So for gratitude, uh, many, many people to thank to make an evening like this possible, and certainly a residency program, and I probably can't thank everyone, but first of all, the Dean's Office, Dr. Liebwen can say Lum for allowing us to use this uh, beautiful space and, and to gather. Uh, Malia Young and her entire special events team. Uh, Malia's really, I've worked with her for a long time and she's really the one who puts special in special events. Uh, Heidi Kubo and the uh, HRP staff who are, are here uh, running around in the background. Certainly our current um, and our rising chiefs who've done so much to plan this evening. We're thankful to all of you. Can't have the residency without our hospital sponsor, HRP and a polymomy. And we really can't have the residency without community preceptors, our community attendings. Our program would grind to a halt in an instant if it weren't uh, for all of the physicians in the community that welcome us into their offices and uh, uh, work with us in the hospital. So special shout out to that group. And then of course our own uh, core faculty, many of whom are represented here tonight and who will uh, come up at various times. So just a little word of gratitude to all of those folks who helped make the residency possible and, and uh, this evening. So what about the meaning of uh, graduation? And I suppose I should speak to this uh, group to my left. 
Um, well, several things. Graduation and this celebration tonight really marks both an end and a beginning. So clearly it's the end of a long, long, sometimes grueling training period and three years of residency training. And it's also the beginning of this ability to have independent medical practice in the community. And independent in this case is sometimes a scary word. And this is exactly what you've trained for. So uh, it's been a long journey. It's been an arduous one. And I needn't remind you that uh, when you were in organic chemistry as an undergraduate, you might have questioned what you were doing there and if you were really up to the task and whether you measured up. And uh, then when you were sitting for your MCAT exam, you might have said, what am I doing here? I could be surfing. And uh, you questioned whether you measured up and then you interviewed for medical school and you probably questioned whether you measured up. And then you were completing a sub internship and you probably wondered what you were doing there and whether you measured up. And then it was on to ERAS and the match. And that was a nerve wracking time. And well, you get the idea. You probably wondered if you measured up. Well, this celebration tonight is to acknowledge all of these steps, all that you've accomplished and the challenges that you faced and overcome and to say without a doubt, you measure up. There's a second meaning from graduation that I think is equally important. And that's that while this is your path and your accomplishment, you haven't uh, taken this on alone and you've received a lot of support along the way from grandparents, from parents, significant others, spouses, classmates, friends. They've all encouraged you, supported you, sometimes subsidized you, kept the home fires burning while you were on yet another long call in the hospital. So as we celebrate this evening, it's really also a time for reflection and thanks really to all of those who've helped you uh, to achieve this success and helped you along this, this path. So just wanna say uh, those words of uh, sort of thanks and gratitude to all of your extended uh, family and friends. So Juneteenth, so this is a brand new holiday and our celebration tonight is special and poignant in part because it falls on this holiday. It's truly an independence day. And I think we're all beginning to um, think and uh, learn what this means. So we all know parts of the history of slavery in the continental United States and Juneteenth may have originated in the 1860s, but clearly, clearly resonates, uh, uh, resonates right up to the present to the present day. And it reminds us that when one group wields power over another, we are not at our collective best. And this is true of the US legacy around slavery. And it's also true as one examines historical events elsewhere in the world, including right here in these beautiful islands. So as we celebrate, we celebrate you tonight, on this first official Juneteenth, we're really celebrating with a sense of hope, a sense of idealism, and we are sending you out into the community and the world as healers. And we're proud of your accomplishments, and we celebrate your future potential to create a healthier Hawaii and a healthier world. So on behalf of the entire faculty, I just wanna say congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Hickson, for those very nice words. So with great pleasure, we'd like to introduce the guests of honor tonight. So as we call your name, if you can rise and stay standing until the very end, please. We've got Dr. Nina Baker. Dr. Corey Chin. Dr. Andrea Gregerson. Dr. Lemomi Kanagusuku. Dr. Caroline Riddle. Dr. Charles Sunido. 
and Dr. Christopher Sutherland. If we can give them all a round of applause, please. All right, we also wanna recognize the, the presence of some VIPs in the audience today as well. Um, so starting with our Associate Dean of Academic Affairs, as well as DIO of UH Japsum, so Dr. Alib Wan Konseho Lum. Yeah, sorry, if you could please stand. And then we have our, uh, we already heard from him, but our um, department chair, as well as interim program director, Dr. Chip Higson in the back. We also have our two um, associate program directors here with us. We have Dr. Thomas Quattlebaum and Dr. Robert Carlisle. And then we have our family medicine and sports medicine program administrator, Heidi Kubo. She might be hiding off in the back. And then um, they might also be hiding over there. We have our administrative assistants, Patty Carlson and Lisa O'Hara. And then we have our HRPC OO, who unfortunately couldn't be here, but she sends her regards, Marlene Kiave. And then we would also like to make a special introduction of our PGY1s and PGY2s, uh, who are not quite, haven't gone the distance yet, but we want to recognize them. If they can stand when we read their names. So we have Dr. Jackie Adlawan, uh, Dr. Nicholas Anderson, um, Arcelita Imasa, who's in Hilo, but I think she's watching virtually. And then we have Ryan Joe Hall, Kana Maiji, Jason Lay, and Yoon Ro. And then for our PGY1s, we have Dr. Capono Cheng, who unfortunately can't be here. And then Gladys Stevano, Liana Kobayashi, Jerry Liu, Kayla Murata, Kanoe Quiblon, and Douglas Jung. All right, so now that we've properly introduced everybody, uh, we wanted to turn the time over to Dr. Paolo Fox for a um, special blessing. You know, in the spirit of Hawaii and the Pacific, aloha mai kaku and yakui komaolep. I just wanted to kind of uh, bring us really around what these mean. And so many of you know what it means, but some of you probably have never heard this. So aloha mai kako, when you hear the word aloha, you know, it's love and goodbye, hello, but it's alo is the face or the presence, ha is the breath. And so it means your presence and your breath. Mai is to come in, kako is all of us. So what it really means is I'm calling you into the space here and also that we're calling each other into the space. So it's a bilateral meaning, aloha mai kaku, when you hear that. In Marshallese, there's a word called yakwe komalib, and you probably heard yakwe, but what it means is you are the rainbow. Drelong tok, you are the rainbow come in. So it's similar, you as the rainbow come in. So again, in the spirit of that, the words um, are really the beginning of a blessing, and it's an invitation to come together to silence the external noise, make quiet the internal noise, and listen to your breath and listen to what is inside of you at this moment. One of the dimensions of learning to be a physician is to understand spirituality and faith. Faith in the science of medicine, faith in your teachers and professors, faith in your families faith in each other and faith in yourselves, faith in the power of the collective and the power that surrounds us. This blessing is actually for me and asking all of you for blessings, that you continue to bless each other with your help, that you continue to bless your patients with your gifts of science and healing, that as you all, especially the graduating physicians, continue your journey and voyage as you complete your unfinished symphony, you do it through giving as you have been given. May the food from the bentos and each other make us strong and have a, a good time. And something that I've shared with the residents before, in Yap, there's a word that means um, thank you and it's kamagara. And kamagara translates to you look tired. 
but it's appropriate for this. All of you look tired, you look tired, but, but it's because for the folks here, you've had a long day and you're coming to share in a very special time. Some of you had long trips here. For the residents, you've had a long journey to this point. You do look tired, but it's that tired in the sense of it's a gratitude. You're tired, but you're willing to be here and share. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Paula Fox. So we'd like to present the Faculty Teaching Awards next. So the Faculty Teaching Award is traditionally given to one community faculty member of the Family Medicine Core, fa family medicine core Faculty Member. They've been voted on by all of our residents as someone who is an excellent teacher and an amazing mentor. So this year, we we have an additional award for a special someone as well. Um, but first, we'd like to start with the Community Faculty Award. So this goes to a doctor who graduated medical school from the University of the Philippines. He moved on to do his internal medicine residency at the University of Chicago and ultimately graduated from his fellowship in rheumatology from the Cleveland Clinic. He currently practices at Straub Medical Center, and he takes a lot of our residents to work with him. Over the years, he has enriched our lives with his willingness to teach and abundance of knowledge. It's no wonder that he's been listed in the Honolulu Magazine's Best Doctors Since 2010. We'd like to welcome to the stage Dr. Alberto Santos Ocampo. I'm truly uh, humbled by this, you know. Um, it's just a part-time uh, gig with, with you guys and me, but uh, I hope you learn something with the few weeks that you spend with us, you know. And I would encourage all of you to become better than us. Yeah? Um, one of my favorite quotations is from Da Vinci. And he said that the poor is the pupil who does not surpass his teacher. So I would like to twist that a little bit and say poor is the teacher who doesn't encourage his student to surpass him. Okay. Well, good luck and enjoy your journey. Thank you. All right. So next up, uh, we have the Family Medicine Core Faculty Award. And so this year, this is going to a physician who is originally from Virginia, uh, then graduated from Oregon Health Sciences University Family Medicine Residency Program. Um, he then joined, or he went away to work on the reservation for a while, and then he came and joined us in the middle of a pandemic back in 2019, pretty much right when it started. Um, and then since he's come, he's really helped to reshape many aspects of, of the program. He's got us more involved in QI and been very dynamic in his teaching and pushing us to be better um, and so we'd like to thank uh, Dr. Thomas Quattlebaum, who will be receiving this reward, invite him up to come say a few words. I can't be as eloquent as the uh, the last speaker, um, but uh, thank you guys. Definitely appreciate this honor. Um, it's definitely been an honor to be involved in your residency. I'm super honored to be part of your training. Uh, came at a really difficult time for all of us personally and you know the residency and basically the whole world. Um, so uh, it's been extremely memorable. Like I said, uh, just appreciate you guys allowing me to be a part of your residency and teaching you, I totally agree with that. I would love to see all of you surpass uh, me and continue to pass on your knowledge to anyone else you come across. And yeah, best of luck in the future. Enjoy post-residency life. All right. 
So we also have a special wellness award that we've created this year. So uh, I know that we've already talked or mentioned the pandemic many times in this um, presentation so far. Obviously, it's been something that's been very prevalent in our lives. And with that, you know, burnout was already prevalent before the pandemic started. And then with the pandemic, that makes things a lot harder. And so um, there's someone we'd like to recognize this year for helping to promote our wellness during all the unique things that we've been going through. Uh, this faculty member has kept us sane and helped provide a safe space to share when needed. We're very sad to see her go, um, but we wish her the best. And we'd like to welcome to the stage, Dr. Robin Miyamoto. Well, I wasn't prepared for this thing. You guys are making me cry. <laughs> It's been a privilege, and I'm not going very far, and I'm really excited to see what you guys are going to do. Thank you. So we wanted to also present a special award today for someone who was instrumental in building a new home for us, for our program. So today marks about one year that our clinic moved from Mililani to the Polymomi Aiea area. This individual not only met with legislature, but also attended numerous community board meetings to advocate um, for us and our presence being there in, our, in the community, work with UHP, with JABSEM, and not only that, but moved in the middle of a global pandemic, which was extremely difficult. So they were part of making this home uh, for our new patients and our old patients that we've brought from Mililani. It saved us a lot of gas mileage. Thank you. And uh, we just wanted to say thank you to Dr. Hickson for creating our new home. Um, thank, thank you very much. Unexpected and um, uh, really appreciated. Um, I just want to say it takes a big team, and um, that's how we got it done. And uh, you were all part of that, and I thank you. Actually, Dr. Hickson, we ask you not to. You can go set that down, but we'll invite you back up to the stage. And also Dr. Carlisle um, to get to the residency award portion of the ceremony. Uh, I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Carlisle, Dr. Quattlebaum, and Dr. Swain to come up, and we're going to give a series of uh, resident awards. And uh, we'll start with the first one, which is the uh, Resident Research Award. It is my great pleasure to announce the honoree for this year's Resident Research Award. Uh, and that person is our own Dr. Nina Baker. Nina, please come on up. <laughs> Just as a small sampling for what Nina has undertaken recently, uh, she did a profound uh, presentation on gelastic uh, seizures. Uh, so well that it was actually the award-winning presentation at the Hawaii Academy of Family Physicians Spring Meeting, uh, truly representing herself well as well as the entire residency. Beyond that, in the setting of the COVID pandemic, she also did research and presented it in terms of making our care and our response to the COVID pandemic even better. That is just a small sampling, and with all that Nina does, she did it with a humility such that it was under the radar and it was very hard to even know that she was doing it. But in the end, uh, what it meant to us, what it meant to the people around us and what it meant to our program was astounding. And to that end, Nina, thank you so much for all that you've done. Oh, 
Here you go. Um, Dr. Quattlebaum for the Resident Teaching Award. Okay. So I'm happy I get to return the honor to give an award for uh, teaching, so I'm excited about that. Uh, I think the person who gets this award, sorry, again, I have to follow someone who spoke very eloquently, I apologize. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm super honored to, to give this award to Dr. Lemomi Kanagusuku, um, please. Um, for uh, all your contributions, you know, I didn't get to, to witness personally all of them, but just based on reputation from before I came, I know you're already in line for this award, but uh, just for your contributions to establishing morning reports, always being willing to teach your fellow residents, uh, students, uh, even faculty uh, about new things. Uh, you're such a great example for teaching. Um, super happy that you're going to be part of the program going forward. Um, so yeah, thank you. And congratulations. I'm going to be giving the Community Service Award, um, and this award this year goes to Dr. Charles Sanito. Please come up here. So this award is usually giving to someone who um, really commits themselves to community service either during residency or after, and Charles is going to be joining his family's practice and serving the community um, in our state of Hawaii, not only Oahu. Um, and it's been my pleasure to not only be your faculty, but also your advisor. I'm excited for you to take all your passion and smiles um, into the community um, and form a great panel of patients. Thank you. So one of the most difficult jobs is not only being a resident, but being a chief resident. Our chiefs not only work tirelessly to create schedules, to manage the ins and outs of the residency, but they took on the job during the middle of the pandemic, which amplified the difficulties and the challenges and our three chief residents did so with grace, with humility, and always a smile on their face. So we'd like to invite Dr. Hickson up again to present the awards for the chief residents. So that was beautifully said. So um, the chief residents usually begin around uh, March, uh, uh, late in the spring. And last March, Right around the middle of the month was when we got an announcement that uh, medical students could no longer uh, um, uh, go into any of their clinical settings and that we needed to probably close or transform our office and that we needed to look at the whole curriculum and figure out how we were going to safely train people in the midst of COVID. And we had three brand new chiefs and they came forward with such positivity, resilience, optimism, was just amazing. And I don't really think we could have gotten through the year in the way that we did without them. And certainly I am very uh, grateful for all that they've contributed to the program. So uh, we thank you. And I know we don't know the half of it. So please come on forward. Dr. Baker, Dr. Kanagusuku, and Dr. Sinito. Maybe we can I just did a big
Okay, before we move on to the presentation of diplomas, uh, the graduating class would like to offer a hula that represents their journey throughout medicine. Um, please know I'm not from the island, so if I mispronounce words right now, forgive me. Uh, for the for the Lahui was written and performed by Grammy nominee and Nahoku awardee Josh Tatofi. Uh, the song was inspired by the movement at Mauna Kea. For the graduating class, it represents our struggles that we've been through, both together and individually, and our love and passion to serve our patients and community. Um, so we'll turn it over now to Lena and Lemo, Nina and Lemomi uh, for the hula. That was beautiful. So next, we would like to celebrate the residents as they progress and move on from supervised to supervisor, residents to attendings. We invite Dr. Hickson to the front to present the graduates with their diplomas. And if all the faculty members can join us at the front, please. You will ask the uh, faculty to come forward and please make a bit of a receiving line headed uh, across to my right. Okay, now in reverse alphabetical order. Dr. Chris David Sutherland. All right, so Dr. Sutherland wanted us to read this while he gets his diploma. I wanna thank, to, or take this opportunity to thank my family and loved ones who have worked and sacrificed just as much as I have over the past seven years. In particular, I wanna thank and honor my loving wife, Bethany, who shouldered the incredible burden of raising our four children without any vacation or sick days. Without her, I would not be here today. I would also like to thank the program and the attendings who helped enable me to learn and grow as a physician and a peer.
Charles Dean Sinito. Charles would like to thank his family for putting up with him for the last 30 years. Please. And then he would also like his parents and wife to please stand up. Caroline Marie Riddle. Caroline says, I would like to thank our faculty attendings for their sharing their knowledge, patience, and kindness with me. I would like to thank my family for supporting me through three decades of education. My husband, Dan, for listening to me vent after difficult days, always supporting my dreams, and teaching me rotator cuff anatomy over and over and over. <laughs> Lastly, I would like to thank Sam and Pearl for being so cute. <laughs> Le Momi Noel Kanagusuku. The mommy says, Mahalo Nui Loa to my family and friends for getting me to this point in my life and continuing to be my foundation. I love you all. This is a dream come true. Andrea Ann Bucci Gregerson. Andrea says, I would like to say mahalo to my family and friends near and far for all your love and support throughout all of these years. To my husband, I couldn't have made it through residency without you. I love you and the amazing friend and dad you've had to be when I couldn't be there. To my mom, we did it. Through all the struggles and triumphs, you've been my number one supporter. Thank you for cheering me on and being such an amazing mom and grandmother. To my children, you are too young to fully understand what is happening, but I hope when you look back at this, on this moment, you realize the world is your oyster and you can do anything you set your mind to. To our faculty and clinic staff, thank you for sharing your wisdom, helping me to grow, and being on our team. I appreciate all you do for the residents. Corey Cho So Chin. Corey says, I'd like to thank all my friends and family for your love and support throughout the past three years, and I hope to make you proud in my future endeavors. Nina Lealoha Baker. <laughs> Nina would like to say, I think my new nickname for you all is the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Each and every one of you has helped me to achieve my ch childhood dream of becoming a doctor, and I sincerely could, sincerely could not have done it without you. To the faculty and all my teachers, I'm forever grateful for the gems of knowledge you have given me. Mahalo Nui for your patience, for make, making learning fun, and for being physicians that I look up to and aspire to be. To the MAs and PSRs, thank you for putting up with my turtle speed in clinic and for always having my back when I needed it. To my colleagues for lifting me up when I needed it at most at work and never letting me lose sight of why we do what we do. To Lemomi, how you do everything you do, I'll never understand. I'm pretty sure you have an evil twin who helps you. But no, seriously, I couldn't have survived this pandemic chief year without you. Partners in crime for life. To my family and friends for being weird and random, making me laugh every day and for giving me all the bare necessities that I needed to keep on swimming. And to my husband and Izzy, for believing in me and for being the best part of my day every day. Love you all. Woo! One more round of applause for the class of 2021. So we'd like to invite Dr. Buenkosejo Lum up to the front. She's our keynote speaker tonight. Aloha everyone, thank you so much uh, for coming and uh, since I'm here, I guess on behalf of the Johnny Burns School of Medicine, really wanted to welcome all of you and just really, we're so very happy that we could have, have this wonderful event here uh, this evening. Uh, and, and to this amazing class, what an honor and a privilege it is that you asked me to be your keynote speaker. Um, it's been a long journey, and it has been not quite 30 years, but 
almost, uh, since I sat, well, actually, I think we had our graduation out in Dr. Wilkinson's uh, beach. I can't remember. Was it? We're, maybe we were out there in Mokali'ia, very casual, very formal. Those were the early days. Uh, but certainly, uh, it's been 153 graduates, uh, you know, since then. So um, first, before addressing you folks, wanted to uh, mahalo all of our past and uh, current faculty uh, and our amazing staff that have been with us through the years uh, at, uh, with, at the Physician Center at Minilani, at Polymomi, at Waihua, and now at, at Polymomi. And so it really has been quite an amazing journey with many, many, many stories. Um, some of which we have shared uh, in the call room at Polymomi, uh, not over alcohol, but instead over popcorn and caffeine. Thank you, Charles. <laughs> so um, what I just wanted to share are some quotes from some of my uh, favorite authors or fictional people or real people. And so the first one is the great wise Albus Dumbledore. As you all know, I'm very much a Harry Potter fan. Um, but Dumbledore reminds us that it is really our choices that show us where we truly are far more than abilities. When I look at all of you, you all come from very different backgrounds. You have had different struggles. Each of you has different strengths. Many of you rose above despite naysayers, despite whatever obstacles were thrown in your way, and still you persisted, like the great RBG. It has not been an easy road, certainly numerous changes. You've heard tonight about uh, the amazing pivot that had to happen, um, and really for all of the uh, family medicine ohana that's in this room, uh, we really look, we now speaking at the school, really you know, look to this department and to this clinic as some of our leaders in how we care for patients, how we come together, how, we, how very collaborative, uh, and really just rising above on a moment's, on a moment's notice. Um, many of you, many of our faculty, uh, really just took some amazing leadership in the early days of the pandemic. And it seems like so long ago, right? It was a year and a half ago, uh, maybe not quite, maybe 15 months ago, seems like forever. Um, but you folks have been amazing. And we've had a new clinic, telehealth. Um, again, many people in this room just doing amazing things. Also, you've had to make some difficult choices. So Dumbledore reminds us that happiness can be found even in the darkest of times if one only remembers to turn on the light. And that's what I see in all of you. We've all had days, sometimes weeks, sometimes entire inpatient services, which weighed heavily, heavily on your hearts, you're exhausted. We had some very difficult patients with incredibly complex uh, struggles. Many of you have had your own family or personal struggles and joys uh, during residency, but you always demonstrated empathy for your weary and downtrodden patients. I think that's why you chose family medicine. That's why we chose you. And we expect that that will continue uh, forever. The other thing is about connection and seeing potential. So Brene Brown is an author who uh, we've used for some of our chief resident leadership training and other things. But Brene describes connection as the energy that exists between people when they feel seen, heard, and valued. When they can give and receive without judgment, and when they derive sustenance and strength from the relationship. So all of our residents, and all of you have had incredible connections. In fact, I think that's probably the word that comes to mind most when I think about you. You've connected with patients, you've connected with staff, the faculty, you thought about the world as a system. You've thought about healthcare 
as a system and you've cared about each other. Your connections are so strong that you've been, you've developed into amazing clinicians. And in fact, I entrust some of my own family members to some of you and some of my former patients to you and to some of you out there too, which again is an amazing testament, I think, to the strength of all of our residents. And then leadership. Dumbledore also says it matters not what, what someone is born, but what they grow to be. So each of you in your way have been incredibly strong advocates for each other, for your patients, for doing what's right, for improving systems of care in the ER, in Epic, in like you name it, you guys found a problem. You not only complained about it, but more importantly, you proposed solutions. And that's amazing. You've all been organizers. And Lao Tzu mentions that a leader is best when people barely know he exists. When his work is done, his aim fulfilled, they will say, we did it ourselves. And to all of our residents, I'm very, really very proud of you because you all are leaders um, and you are all servant leaders and uh, you collaborate and you respect and you're, again, your life is full of purpose and service. And so I just end uh, with a famous, now famous quote by the young Amanda Gorman, who is our 2021 inaugural poet from the hill we climb. And I think this is very appropriate because of all the injustices that we see right here in Hawaii and around the world. The whole department is really founded on justice and on doing the right thing. And so even though I'm sort of not really in the department anymore, it gives me immense pride to still call this family home. So Amanda Gorman mentioned, in every known nook of our nation, in every corner called our country, our people, diverse and beautiful, will emerge battered and beautiful. When day comes, we step out of the shade of flame and unafraid. The new dawn blooms as we free it, for there is always light, if we're only brave enough to see it, and if you're only brave enough to be it. Mahalo. Thank you, Dr. Bilam. So we'll be going on to the gifts next. As this is a long-standing tradition within our program. So if we can start with the PGY1s and the PGY2s gifting to the graduating residents. We can start with Dr. Nina Baker. So we'll have people come to the front to present your gift. I got Nina a gift card to Big Island Brew House so that she can have some date nights with Tim in Waimea someday. <laughs> Thank you for being my big sister. I've looked up to you since I've been in med school. Thank you for her. Thank you for her. leading the way and continuing the jobs and legacy and for everything that you do for the people of what and everything that you will do for all of our patients on the big island <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'll be reading uh, the message of uh, Dr. Arcelita Imasa because she cannot be here. She's in Big Island right now. 
uh, doing her VA rotation. So here it goes. Hi, Nina. I'm not able to attend the residence graduation today as I'm in the Big Island for my VA rotation. But I'm very happy, just like everyone else, in celebrating this joyous day. To Nins, I'm so proud of your accomplishments throughout the years. I've known you since med school and you've shared so much about yourself and also shared your life blessings and kindness. You're such a teacher and a healer at heart and people around you are lucky to know you. My gifts for you today are all here in the Big Island and will be waiting for you when you get here. I've already made arrangements to get them to you once you've moved here. So no worries about it. Here's a short poem uh, for you, which includes one of the gifts I have for you. It's, it's a picture of a plant, cactus plant. Nins B, how's it? Is how we say welcome aloha to the big island. B is for Beckwith and Baker B and Baker. B is for Big Island. B is also for beautiful as you are. This plant and the beautiful people of Hawaii, the Big Island will be waiting for you. We stay waiting for you and your family. I hope I pronounced that right, RC. I'm still learning the language. Thank you. for Dr. Corey Chin. I am Jerry. Um, I will not be crying, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for Corey, yeah, I worked with him recently on F Mrs. Mapper. He was uh, just one of the best residents I've ever, ever worked with. Um, learned a lot from him and uh, He's always had my back over and over again on service, so I really appreciate everything. Um, I think he's gonna be such an incredible doctor. Uh, look forward to, uh, to all the great things that you're gonna accomplish. Um, hopefully get a job from one of your clinics in the future. <laughs> so this is not sucking up early, but, um, but uh, yeah, very excited. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, yeah, hopefully you get to surf one day, and uh, cool. Um, so the gift, to my wife actually, <laughs> Oh, what the gift? Uh, I was on FMS, but she, but Corey's, uh, and I don't know if everyone knows, but he's gonna have a, a kid soon, yeah. so very exciting. So him being a surfer, we got a little surfing book for, for him to read to his kid. Um, a, little, a little beach hat, like a surfer hat, and I think she got some baby clothes with, with like uh, beach themed stuff, and I got him a um, wax, because he always used more wax. So that's it. <laughs> Got something for you too, Corey. Um, I didn't prepare anything to say, so it's coming straight from in here, right? Um, <laughs> uh, Corey's just such a great guy. Uh, you know, I think everyone who's worked with him can say that, um, you know, every time you walk in a room and see Corey there, you have a smile on your face and uh, just always has such a great attitude. Um, gonna be such a great doctor, um, as Jerry was saying as well, you know, uh, probably gonna have several clinics and several businesses, I bet. Very business mindset. Uh, so I got you a couple of books. Uh, this one's called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. It's written in like the 1930s, uh, but it's a classic, apparently. I'm, I, mean, I apologize if, you're, if you've already read any of these. Uh, this one's called The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham. This one's written in the 1940s. Again, a classic. Um, but lots of hopefully good things to learn in here. And yeah, congrats, man. Okay, we'll be gifting Dr. Andrea Gregerson next. Sorry, me again. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna be up here again one more time later, so hopefully you don't get tired of me. This is from Doug. He's currently uh, doing ER rotation, so he's uh, busy saving lives, but uh, he wanted to give this to Drea and thank Drea for everything. I know they work together doing FMIS. Uh, and also from me, I worked with Drea recently on Night Shift, and it's been awesome. Learned a lot from her. Uh, most importantly, not to watch scary movies on Night Shift, because <laughs> definitely a no-no. So thank you, Drea.
will be gifting to Dr. Lemomi Kanagusuku next. So I was thinking about what to say to you, Lei. Um, but I was thinking actually when I first met you, like over 10, yeah. at least 10 years ago. <laughs> um, but I think since then, I have seen you just blossom. Um, and when I first met you, you were kind of shy. <laughs> right? <laughs> Small kind shy. Um, but even then, you just had, you know, the purest, gentlest heart. And I think over the years, like watching you in med school, you've really developed into a really admirable leader, um, someone that can relate to the people, but someone that can also speak to other leaders. So I just, I'm very excited for all of the things that you will continue to do all of the things that you've already done has, you know, greatly impacted a lot of people. Um, but I just, I think it's, it's amazing. You're amazing. And I want you to know that I'm very thankful for you. I'm very thankful for all you've done for the program. Um, and, you know, just continue to be who you are because you're a queen girl. So make sure you, you live it like that. <laughs> okay. It's a secret. <laughs> Queens don't have to tell. I know. I'm not the best public speaker. No, you're the best. Oh. But uh, I'll just tell a story about Lemomi. We were on FMIS together with Kohei, so it was an interesting FMIS. My first impression of Le Momi was, oh my God, who is this bubbly woman next to me? Um, but as we got to get to know her a little bit better, I found out she is very relaxed, very chill. She actually um, can drop a couple F-bombs, and I really appreciated that because it made me feel a lot more comfortable. Um, but again, thank you for all you've done, Le Momi. I know you get some sleep, so with that, I give you my present. It is the trifecta of wines for my favorite wino. I have your rose or a rosé, depending how fancy you want to be. The finest of Pinot Grigio, Kirkland. And your requested red wine by Hasso Rob Robles. Robles. Yes. So enjoy your sleep tonight. <laughs> Next is Dr. Caroline Riddle. Um, so Caroline, congratulations. Um, I was able to, I wasn't able to work with you this year, but when I was here on my sub I, um, I was able to work pretty closely with you. And that was, for me, um, one of my earlier inpatient experiences. And I really appreciated how you um, helped like build my confidence in getting ready for residency. Um, I think you did a really nice job of showing me how to be organized and uh, also kept things pretty um, light and I guess, I felt comfortable, um, so you know you were one of the really big reasons why I wanted to come back home to this program. So thanks for everything. Um, sorry, I put a tissue here, which wasn't obviously needed since I'm going to open it. Um, so I got you. This is like a portable beach slash hiking kind of blanket thing. It's supposed to be waterproof and sandproof, and portable. <laughs> so like I know you guys like to go hiking and to the beach, so that, and then some beachy drinks to go <laughs> along with it. One of each, and then something for Sam. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 
So Caroline, my gift for you is not a surprise. <laughs> but one thing about Caroline is she will always, always have a smile on her face. And regardless of the circumstance, she'll always be bubbly. She'll be up for the challenge. She's a fighter as well. I know that we have some, I won't say outspoken people in our program, but we have people that will fight for not only you know, the program itself, but for others as well. And Caroline is definitely one of those people. I like your fire, it burns, it burns very bright and it's very, um, it's palpable and it really spreads. So thank you for all that you've done. For you, because you're an avid runner and very fit, um, got you a yoga mat for your recovery. And for your beach days with Sam, something waterproof. We have Dr. Charles Sanito next. I got you the best gift, that's why the box is huge. Um, I met Charles even before residency, and I somehow ended up with him as my senior twice this year. So I know for a fact that he's a very intelligent, capable, comical individual who's more often than not the life of the party. And I appreciate all your support through my intern year. Um, my gift to you reminds me of our bond of food and boba. So <laughs> I will have you open this if you want now or later. Um, but congrats again, and I wish you the best of luck in this next chapter of your life as an attending. Uh, I'll put it up here. Mine's not wrapped. Um, so I obviously had Charles. So quick story. When uh, when I think of Charles, I think of random. And that's not like a bad thing. It's because I've had the most random conversations of my life where he always has the most random like TV recommendations. If you want some weird stuff, look to Charles and he'll probably know what to recommend. But it's also funny. Um, and then when I was thinking, so when I was an intern on OBE, the first two days I was alone and I was like, this is miserable. And I was feeling quite blue. And then Charles came on Wednesday. I wasn't, I didn't know that that was going to happen. And all of a sudden it changed the outlook of that rotation because Charles just, I mean, anyone who works with Charles knows you can't not be laughing or just have a smile on your face when you're working with Charles. Um, and then Rochelle, my wife wanted me to throw in some puns. So because you will be leaving us, we'll all be very blue. And then, um, but now that you're finishing residency, it's a dream come blue, Charles. So um, anyways, there's a bunch of random stuff. I think you'll like it. And I also know you like food, so I just put some food in there too. But you'll be missed, Charles. We love you. We have Dr. Sutherland next. Sorry, me again. <laughs> um, so this is <laughs> uh, this is uh, from Capono. Uh, he is on IC right now. I can join us today. Um, but so this is what he wrote. Sorry, I couldn't make it today. Congrats, Chris. Four kids and got your dream job at the VA. You're the man. Want to say thank you for being a great upper and, and all the great advice you've given along the way. You're an inspiration to me as a dad. I got you a lunch cooler or a beach cooler. Um, Haha, ha. uh, also, also got some swimming goggles for your kids. So got a lot of goggles in here for <laughs> many, many goggles here. I won't take them off, but they're all in there. Um, yeah, so now you're gonna be working at Kailua. We gotta go beach. Uh, thanks, man. Congrats to you and all the other uh, graduates.
Hi, Chris. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, I don't know if you remember, but um, um, he's uh, literally the first person I met from this program. So he welcomed me uh, when I was interviewed program. So I was so impressed with his um, positive and uh, like easygoing vibe, I would say. And then as well as his height, he was <laughs> scraping the ceiling of the Kapiolani cafeteria, old one. So yeah, after that, he's been a um, very nice upper resident throughout uh, whenever. Uh, actually, we, I did a quite a lot of rotations with you, like OB and then AFMI. So he was not bothered by um, like being asked uh, questions. And whenever I seek help, he's very um, willing to help out. So yeah, um, please know that I was very appreciative that time. And as a father of one kid, I'm very, I um, very uh, admire him uh, that uh, he accomplished this training um, while he's taking care of his big family, like seamlessly. Um, I was so impressed. So yeah, um, so uh, yeah, the present, um, it's, a, it's a head, uh, it's a just a head uh, which will provide you some shade. So <laughs> you're like a tree. <laughs> <laughs> that I can lean on and provide some shades, not necessarily because of your like height and arm span and heaviness. It just, you know, <laughs> not, oh, okay. Uh, so this is the shade, uh, I mean, uh, head for your own uh, shade. So yeah, I wish my uh, best for your journey ahead. Don't call me head. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just kidding, yeah. I'm very, congratulations. Sorry, Drea, I'm your PGY too. Okay, um, aloha and congratulations to you class of 2021, especially Drea. There are many things that I admire about you, especially your ability to balance the busy life of both motherhood and residency. You strive to do the best for your children and this includes pumping breast milk for, for them in between our busy clinical rotations. Knowing you gives me extra inspiration to persevere. Thank you for all your kindness as a co-resident these past two years, especially the many teaching, special, uh, especially the important stuff to know in family med inpatient service and night float. Thank you too for being my upper resident body this past two years, especially when you took time to listen to my complaints and emotional pain. Once you get settled with your job, you will have more time for your family and of course for yourself. So I'm giving you a small bottle of vodka <laughs> so you can uh, use it to make your favorite drink. Just remember to wait at least six hours or more after drinking before you breastfeed or pump breast milk again. You're already beautiful in and out, even without makeup. But I'm giving you a gift card to, uh, at Sephora so you can get more of the makeup stuff because you will have more time to make yourself more beautiful. <laughs> you will also have more time to increase physical activity. So I'm giving you a sunscreen cream, which you will need especially when you join me hike Coco Crater, Coco Crater Railroad Trail someday. Lastly, you will have more time to learn new things, including cooking Filipino dishes. So my husband and I would love to invite you in, and your family to teach you in person some of the, these dishes, including the pinakbet or the sauteed uh, mixed Filipino veggies with the fish sauce that I brought you during our night food together at the hospital. Just let us know when you are available. Again, congratulations on your graduation and hoping and praying for more blessings for you and all class of 2021 and the rest of your family and loved ones. So one of the cool things with this tradition is it also goes the other way. So now we're gonna allow the PGY3s to talk a little bit about the PGY ones that they chose and also with the gifts. Yeah, we'll just go, Dr. Baker. Hi everyone. So 
I have um, I have Liana. I don't know if you want to sit there or come up. Whatever's less awkward for you. <laughs> So um, the reason why I chose Liana, so um, Liana, I had the privilege of being um, able to read your personal statement. And, you know, I've been a teacher and I was a college counselor. And so um, I've read a lot of personal statements before. And there's f a few of them that really stand out to me. And yours was one of them. Um, I was really inspired by your passion and the goals that you have moving forward, not only for yourself, but for the people of Hawaii that really need you the most. And that was, it was just amazing. So um, anyways, also, I knew I would have you on FMIS in the beginning of the year and then FMIS at the end of the, end of the year. So I thought it'd be appropriate to choose you for my, my, per my person, my friend. <laughs> Liana likes saying friends, guys. Okay, so for your gift, I got you a bunch of random stuff, but I hope you like it. So Liana's an avid hiker and she loves her dog. And she said her dog doesn't really drink water when they hike and I don't know how because it's super hot in Hawaii. So I got her, it's a like rubber thing that is attached to a water bottle and then you flip it up and it turns into a bowl for your dog, like out of the water bottle. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I know, right? And then we're on F Miss and she said she doesn't, she wish she had a cup. Um, so I got you a really, <laughs> really cute, random, like upside down bear cup. Yeah. Um, and then for, um, for hiking, uh, I don't know how big of hikes you do, but, um, I saw some of your photos on Instagram. It looks like you go to like the KST and I was like, Ooh, she's going pretty high. So this is a, um, it's a survival bracelet. There's like 21 different tools all in one. Um, it's got like a call card, led light, SOS, like a little like saw in it. So I thought it'd be really helpful to put that on your hiking bag. Um, and then the last thing is I, I candy in there because I know you like chocolate. <laughs> Liana eats like five desserts a day, guys, and she's in such good shape. Um, but I have two stickers, one I made and one I got. Um, but uh, so I know that FMIS is really gruesome and intern year is even more gruesome and that you've worked super hard um, this whole year. And one thing I love about Liana is that she reminds me of like, Sesame Street Muppet Baby, like nothing gets her down. She is absolutely always happy. Um, even when Jason's being mean to her, she is still happy. <laughs> and um, she's just always such a positive spirit and keeps on going. And I think it's a reflection probably of your passion for hiking in that even when things get tough, you still keep climbing to the top. Um, so I got you a sticker, it's of the mountains and it says the best views come after the hardest climbs. And then last night I went home and I was like, I need to make you a sticker that says more friends. So I made you, <laughs> I made you a sticker that says more friends. That's it. So I have Jerry. Uh, you guys know Jerry already. <laughs> um, so we worked on FMIS together, and that was kind of crazy. Uh, first time working together, but it was amazing. Um, his work ethic is a stunning, actually, um, and his heart is always in it. Um, so I got to use some gifts to kind of get you through the next couple of years. Um, let's see. Let's just, okay. So I got you a Yeti. That'll keep you. Um, I got you some wax because you're always surfing. We should go. Thanks you got me wax too. And then I got you Jerry cookies. What? So uh, we were on rotation together and there was a family that he really touched. So he got these cookies from Big Island Cookies and he fed everybody for like a week. Yeah. So amazing. Yeah. Thanks, Jerry.
That's my child. Uh, I have Kayla. <laughs> so I chose Kayla because I haven't been on a rotation with her, but I have talked with her in passing at PMOC and I was her night float person for a small while. And if you don't know Kayla, she's probably one of the hardest working interns who goes above and beyond. And when we do have conversations, probably we talk about how we can relax um, and kind of treat ourselves. So we had previously talked about where to get a massage at. <laughs> so your gift is a one hour massage so that you can treat yourself. Um, intern year is hard enough, but doing it during COVID is probably even harder. So you definitely deserve it and keep shining. <laughs> Aloha everyone. My intern couldn't be here this evening, but Douglas is saving lives, like Jerry said, at the ER. Um, Doug has such a wonderful, carefree spirit and personality. I never really see him sad or angry. He's kind of just chill. And that is one of the most amazing things about him. And as you all know, he loves surfing and being outdoors, um, much like how Chris got a hat earlier. I got um, Doug a hat for shade. And also, um, I think one of the best things I've learned in residency is learn when to rest and but not to quit. And that's what um, this kind of represents for him. Just keep going. I know you've got, I know you're gonna watch this after totally, right, Doug? Um, just learn to rest, never to quit. It's okay to just take a pause um, and enjoy life around you. Um, I also got him a pair of socks, mostly because I, I thought they were um, nice and they were right next to the hats. <laughs> and, um, you know, we get really cold on Ephemus, but he has such a warm heart that his core doesn't need any more warming. It's mostly probably just the extremities that may get cold, but his heart is always so, so warm. So I'm never, ever worried about that for you, Doug. And um, I knew I wasn't gonna get to see you in person today. So you've got a batch of butter mochi waiting for you when I see you in person, made fresh. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> I didn't know about the present table. Um, I have Kanoi. So um, Kanoi and I worked together on um, our the first block of the year on FMIS. And I'll never forget the first day when you were letting everyone you came into contact with know it was your first day. <laughs> <laughs> and during the course of just a few short weeks, you know, the rotation's only four weeks long, I got to see you kind of blossom as an intern, gain your confidence, gain some knowledge, and um, I think, you know, we haven't gotten to work together again recently, but it seems like you've really come a long way and you always were ready to learn, ready to work hard. And I always admired that. And I think you're going to be really great and you already are. So just keep working hard and keep chugging along and you'll be here in two short years. <laughs> Hi, my intern is Gladys, and I worked with her for the last, I think, no, um, I worked for two months in the hospital at Poly Mumi, and I got to know her really well. And I remember when I was an intern, uh, we did this whole, uh, like, what are the traits or characteristics you're looking for in future residents and your co intern, co workers? And a couple of them uh, were hardworking, compassionate, and um, uh, Getting to know or work with Gladys, she's all these things. And what, I got her uh, two gifts. Uh, one is a book called Bounce Backs, uh, because we had a lot of bounce backs when we worked in the hospital together. Not because she was a, she was, she, she's great. 
but it's a good for learning. And then I also got her um, a gift card to Rabbit Rabbit Boba Tea because um, uh, one of, uh, because one of the experiences we had on our inpatient rotation was we were long week, we wanted to get some um, drinks and boba milk tea. So I looked up a new boba place called Rabbit Rabbit Tea in Pearl City next to the hospital. And so when I Googled it and called the number, I was like, how come it's taking so long to get this boba? And then I looked at the receipt and it was from California. So I called the number of California and I said, oh my gosh, can I speak to your manager? And then uh, I ordered from the wrong Rabbit Rabbit Tea. And then she was, it was on speakerphone and she laughed at me and Gladys could not stop laughing at me and I couldn't stop laughing at myself. But luckily she refunded it and uh, hopefully she, um, and we got the boba. But Gladys will be a fantastic physician, just, I know it. So thank you. All right, and then we're gonna be saving one of the best for last. I had Capono, um, and right now he's over in the ICU uh, saving lives, I'm sure. Um, I first met him when he rotated through the clinic uh, about two years ago, and then uh, later we met again um, when, we were, when he was doing his audition rotation through the hospital with me. And uh, that was a month where we really had to dig deep and uh, really had to get a lot done to, to help everybody out. But it was a great month. And uh, throughout that time, we really got to know each other really well. Uh, learned about his family, uh, learned about his interests. I know he loves to, to go diving and he loves taking his kids to the, to the beach and, and taking them into the water. And, um, you know, throughout the year, uh, we didn't really get to see each other too much, but when we did run into each other, we were able to take time to, to break bread and eat together in the cafeterias. And, uh, you know, he had his second kid and, and he's doing great. We talked about fatherhood and, and residency and how that all plays out. And, and um, you know, we just had each other's back. And, you know, when it came time for a gift, um, I think we took a page out of the same playbook because for him, got him this awesome, oh, sorry. It's like a snorkeling kit. I don't know if you guys can see it. There we go. I got him a snorkeling kit and he got me goggles. So I, I guess I guess we're of the same mind. So uh, I know he's gonna do great as a doctor and I'm really proud of him. So Capone, this is for you. Thank you so much. Um, so we have a slideshow next, but uh, we wanted to present each and every one of you with a tumbler to your left. We'll be passing them out to you, but it has a picture of the seven of you. And that's just every time you're sipping on your coffee or wine, you can see the beautiful faces that you endured the three years of residency with. So we hope you enjoy it and can reach out to each other, check in with each other in years, decades, and whatnot. And so for the next part, um, one of our PGY2s, Jackie, put together an incredible slideshow.
All right, and that's all we got. So thanks everyone for coming and we have bentos for everyone. So make sure to grab one before you go. Actually, sorry, we have one more video. I didn't know this. Malia, could you please play the last video? Congratulations, Nina. It's been a hard three years, but we knew you could do it. Congratulations! Congratulations, Mama. Say, I love you, Mama. I love you, Mommy. I love you, Mommy. As I'm finishing your residency, your little family is so proud of you. We're so thankful for everything you've done for us, and we can't wait to see what you do next. Morning. Congratulations on finishing residency. You're going to be an excellent doctor. I am so proud of you. The good Dr. Chin. You did it. Who would have thought? Just kidding. Corey, you are a great doctor, a human being of the highest caliber, and one of my best friends. I am incredibly happy for you and so proud of the hard work that you've put in to get this far. Congrats again, and we are definitely going to celebrate this one. See you soon. What up, dude? Hey, congratulations, man, on graduating. I'm so psyched for you, so proud of you. Can't wait to see where life is gonna take you next. Uh, we're sending so many blessings your way in this new chapter of your life. Uh, hope to see you soon, bro. Dr. Corey Chin, 
Congratulations. Congratulations. Caroline, so proud of you. 20 years ago in seventh grade, you were 12 years old and you said, I want to be a doctor when I grow up. All parents hear that, firemen, doctors, you actually accomplished it. Congratulations, love you so much. Happy to be here to celebrate with you. Hi Caroline, congratulations. I love you very much and I couldn't be more proud. And I'm glad that I'm here to celebrate with you. Love you. Jimmy. Caroline, six years ago at the start of medical school, I told you it wasn't the right time to get a puppy. And then 18 months ago, you told me it wasn't the right time to have a baby. But here we are at the end of your training, all happy and smiling. We're so proud of you and all your hard work. You're already the most incredible wife and mother and we'll know you'll be the most incredible physician. We love you so much. Hi, Caroline. Congratulations. So proud of you. See you soon. I'm looking forward to your trip home in July, but we're really, really proud of you. You did great. You know how hard it was. Hi, Dr. Riddle. Congratulations, you did it. It has been amazing watching your determination throughout this process, all while becoming a wife, a mother, um, and I am just so, so incredibly proud of you, and I cannot wait to see you and celebrate. I love you so much. Congratulations, it's Caroline. We're so proud of you. Yeah, and I hope there's a Black Lagoon book called Graduation Day from the Black Lagoon. Love you. Congratulations, Caroline. We're so excited for you. So happy and proud of you. We'll miss visiting you on the rock. <laughs> congratulations. Yay! Congratulations, Dad. We love you. We love you, too. Congratulations, Chris. We're proud of you. And we love you. Hey, Chris, congratulations on finishing your residence. Uh, this, this is your Uncle Jeff. Just want to say congratulations on graduating medical school and becoming a doctor. I know it's been a long, hard road, but we're all so proud of you. Love you. Dr. Sutherland, we are so proud of you. We love you. Congratulations. Way to go. Love you, man. So proud. Congratulations. Congratulations, Lay Mommy. We're proud of you. We love you and God bless you. Hi, little mommy. We just wanted to say congratulations and um, that we're proud of you for this amazing journey and achievement that you have made. Um, and we love you and we cannot wait to see this new journey as Dr. Kanugusuku. Woo! Hey, mommy. Congratulations. You finally did it. It is over. Well, not quite yet, but congratulations for all your hard work. You deserve everything and good luck in your new career. Hope you don't have those long hours because we need to see you for dinner. And don't forget, if you move away, you have to be within walking distance. Okay, again, congratulations. Hey, Moby, congratulations, best wishes in your next chapter in life. Uh, you know you're going to do great. Proud of you. Oh. Okay. Say congratulations, Charles, on your graduation. Congratulations. You're, you're officially a doctor for real. Kaya and Mayo say congratulations. Charles. Say congratulations to your uncle. Oh my goodness. Mayo, you say congratulations. Oh my goodness. Okay. Congratulations, Charles. Congratulations, CD. Congratulations. On your residency, you'll be the doctor that will see all of us now. Woohoo! Yay! Okay, now we're all done. <laughs>